I'm on my way to go get Chinese food. And I want to make a quick video um, about something that's kind of affecting me uh, at this point in my life. Uh, it has to do with something that I did a long time ago um, when I was young. I was in high school and growing up in San Diego, it was the thing to do to go to the beach, uh, lay out in the sun, and don't use any kind of sunblock. Well, they didn't really have a whole big selection back then, uh, like they do now. But as young kids in San Diego, and you know, kind of a, a surf community, um, it was the thing to do to not wear any kind of sun protection, sunblock, sunscreen, nothing. So me and my friends would go down there and lay in the sun um, with just our swim trunks on and that's it. Uh, the more sun we got, the more tan we got, and that was the thing to do. Well, I did that for many years, uh, probably throughout high school, and then <clears throat> afterwards just continued it through my life. Nobody's coming here. I gotta wait for these cars. Years afterwards, you know, just not wearing any kind of sun protection at all. Going out shirtless, getting sunburn after sunburn. Um, and just, you know, for just many, many, many years. So, <clears throat> what happened was about, oh, about 10 years ago, I think it was. I had a bump on my face uh, right here and I thought at first it was a pimple and so I would get in there and just like squeeze it you know and to try to get that pimple to pop and you know uh, discovering that it wasn't a pimple well then in doing that you know it would scab over you know, and it just turned black and it was just really scary looking well, then it would start bleeding down my face, like dripping off my face, um, and it wouldn't stop. So I finally got it to stop bleeding, and then it would crust over, and it, was, it turned jet black. So I finally figured out, hey, dumb, dumb, you know, it's not a pimple. Uh, you need to go to the doctor and figure out what it is. So I went to the doctor, and they took one look at it, and then referred me right away to the dermatology clinic. So they took a look at it and they took a biopsy of it. Uh, they injected a bunch of lidocaine all up around it. Uh, it took a pretty deep tissue sample biopsy. And while I had the incision on my face open, they laid sterile gauze on my face um, and sent it off. They sent it off to the lab to you know, try and diagnose what it was. So I laid in the chair for, I don't know, probably a half hour uh, while they put a rush on the histopath. And it came back as a basal cell carcinoma. And so what that was, was a direct result of me, you know, from being in high school forward, laying out in the sun with no sun protection at all. Just getting basically barbecued every chance I could get. They got good margins on it, which that means that, you know, they got the, the cancer out and then took, you know, beyond it a certain radius all the way around so that there was no other cancer uh, in that area. So I ended up getting closed up with a board certified plastic surgeon. And he did an awesome job. Like, I don't know if you can really see. Well, I, I know you can. I don't want to try, but I had a kind of a line, a visible line scar uh, after he did it and I put some, uh, gosh it was way back in the day, they had some uh, kind of a, it was like a silicone based scar healing ointment that I put on uh, to try and minimize any kind of scar and it really worked, like you can't see anything, I can't see anything. Now I it does get a little bit red and irritated when I'm out in the sun. But anyway, that's kind of the history of, you know, how I got that on my face. Well, fast forwarding to now, um, 
on my forehead here. No, no, I better not try and show you because I'm driving and I don't want to end up in a ditch. But it's kind of along the same lines as what started on my face. Like it's a little bit of a raised skin mass, uh, and it has slowly kind of over oh maybe six months or so kind of grown in size. Well, the other night at dinner, uh, we were out. My wife kind of looks over. And she said, what's that on your head? And I said, well, it's another little, you know, uh, kind of a mass forming, not a mass, but like a little bumped raised area that's a little bit concerning. And so she says, well, I can see it from here. And she says, and it didn't used to be like that. You know, I think you need to go have that looked at. Well, my heart kind of sunk when she said that because that was kind of an affirmation to me that, you know, if you can see it sitting across from me, you know, a good three and a half, four feet away, um, and you didn't notice it before, that, you know, now it's, now it's growing. So that was concerning to me, and so that was on, uh, oh, I think Thursday, Friday. Um, and so I kind of spent the weekend looking for dermatology clinics here in uh, Conway to see about going to get that looked at. So I have found one. Um, I'm going to call Monday, uh, make an appointment to have it looked at, you know, discuss what they will cover with insurance. Um, but I wanted to make this video to anybody who happens to come across this uh, and is curious about, you know, if they have something on their face that they don't know what it is, um, that don't wait. Go get it looked at. If you have to go to a, a family practitioner first and get referred to a dermatologist, do that. If you can go to a dermatology clinic, you know, do that. Uh, but don't wait. Don't be like me. Okay, I'm 53, and when I was, you know, 16, 17, 18, um, I would lay out, like I said at the beginning of this, with nothing but swim trunks on, and just get. Oh, look at this state trooper just get barbecued and red and sunburn you know and, and it would turn to a tan it would be awesome do not do that do not go out in the sun for gosh really anymore it's longer than five minutes and you're risking you know exposure to the ultraviolet rays that cause the you know the mutations of your cells in your skin to turn into skin cancer and if you're if you're lucky, it's a basal cell or a squamous cell carcinoma. I got lucky. I had a basal cell carcinoma. They got good margins. They got it all out. But now I have another one coming up on my forehead. That I'm pretty sure that's what it is. You know, my father had the same thing. He did kind of what I did. He went out in the sun. He had the same hairline I do. Um, and he later in his life got all kinds of masses on his forehead and ears and nose you know he had to go get them burned off cut out sutured up uh, and I, I follow along the same path so I, I want to tell anybody who comes across this video don't do that wear a hat you know I've also spent the day trying to find a big brimmed hat you know they recommend like a four inch brim hat um, the tricky part with that is all you can find is you know two and a half up to three and a half inch hats those boonie hats that kind of flop over on the side they don't give you good sun protection um, so you have to spend anywhere between 80 and 100 bucks to get a really good hat you know um, to get that four inch brim to cover your face so I guess the whole point of this video is you know please don't do what I did don't do what my dad did and don't be that person that goes out and sits in the Sun and gets sunburned thinking it's cool to get tan tanning beds are the same thing and they're probably even worse because you know it's the concentrated UV rays that just pummel your skin with you know the ultraviolet ultraviolet radiation that you don't want so if you have come across this video um, just please just reconsider what you're doing do not stay out in the sun and try and get suntanned or sunburned you know wear a long long sleeve shirt if you can um, I live in Arkansas and it's the summer right now um, with our heat index we're at like 110 plus you know uh, temperatures not always possible to wear a long sleeve shirt but if you can do that um, 
wear a hat for sure. Uh, the sunblock, now it's a little bit of a controversy. I'm reading reports that um, studies are showing that the sunblock could be causing skin cancers as well. Um, I know that when my dad used a sunblock back in the day, they had PABA in it. It's P-A-B-A, -A, and it's an acronym for, uh, I don't know, a, a really long chemical name. But they found out that the PABA that was in the sunblock and the sunscreens were actually causing cancers, skin cancers. Um, so they took out the PABA in the sunscreens and sunblocks. Uh, but now there, are, you know, there's reports coming out that there are other ingredients in there that may be causing more damage than you know protecting your skin. Anyway, I want to wrap this up. Don't please don't do what I did. Wear a hat, wear a long sleeve shirt if you can, limit your time out in the sun. Um, and I know that's hard for a lot of people because they want to be out in the sun. I want to be out in the sun, you know, I love it. I love being outside. I, I love being in the sun, obviously. You know, that's what has caused all this problem uh, on my face. Um, it's what caused me to make this video to kind of tell people, look, you know, don't do it. It's not good. If you don't think of the future, that's where you get in trouble, and that's what happened to me. You know, you have to think of your future if you're young, um, even if you're old. You know, the dermatologist told me back then that the exposure that you get from the sun accumulates over your lifetime. Um, even driving in the car, the sun that comes through the windshield is ultraviolet light. You know, I was not even supposed to drive a car without using sunblock. Um, and at one point in my life, I had a Jeep with a convertible top. I'd put the top down and just roll through town with the, you know, with the sun beating on my face. Um, it was to a point where I wasn't even supposed to have the sun come through the windshield without sunblock. Um, and that's not always practical for me, you know, and I, I, I don't like the way it feels. And now I don't like that they're saying that it could cause more problems than protecting you. Um, so you have to take all those into consideration, you know, that the exposure that you get adds up over your lifetime um, And it comes to a critical point where your skin just can't take anymore and the cells start, you know Turning into something that could potentially be, you know, deadly really um, if you get a malignant melanoma Do some research get a big hat wear long sleeve shirts if you can and just limit the exposure that you get on your skin you can still go out, you just got to think, you know, think of the future, think of your skin, think of your health, think of the people that love you. Because um, it's kind of scary, you know, having it in my face once, um, you know, and having it all removed, you know, I felt a little bit of a relief, but now that I have another one, um, you know, to be truthful, it's a little bit scary. So I hope that you have learned something from this video. I hope you get something out of it. Um, and I guess that's all I wanted to say, you know, just be careful. And I'm kind of planning on maybe making, not a, not a series of this, but like, I'm hoping I can do another video and let you know um, what I found out at the dermatology clinic. Um, and then if need be, do videos on the process of, you know, what's involved with what I have. And I am here at the Chinese place to pick up our dinner. So I'm going to end this video um, and I will talk to you again. All right. Bye.